we've been lighting candles. We last week we we lit the Hope candle, and and <coughs> Pastor Sam and Diane told us a wonderful story of hope in their lives, and and today we're going to light the peace candle, right? And here in this service, if we put the slide up there, there it is, uh, Kelly is going to be sharing with us. And Kelly's been in an interesting time. If any of you have had this experience with your parents, where things begin to change and all of a sudden roles reverse, things that you weren't expecting. I remember one day my mom asked me, when did you become the parent and I become the child? <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? And so these, these changes, we don't like change. We think everything will stay the same, but it doesn't. And so uh, Kelly's been through an interesting time as just caring for her parents. And so I've asked her today to come and light the peace candle and just share with us. Amen. God, put your hands together and greet Kelly as she comes. Okay, I'm not used. Is, is this good? Uh -huh. It's okay. good. Uh, okay, I'm not used to this, so I apologize. Okay. Uh, when Pastor Joe first asked me to speak uh, last week, I uh, was going through a lot, and I thought he had asked me to speak about hope, so I started studying hope and um, wondered what's the difference between hope and faith, and they both work together. And I found some interesting things. I want to start there. Uh, faith is foundational. You know, you've, you've got to have something, someone you believe in, stand firm in, know it's true. And hope is directional. It's in the future. But peace is not what we hope it to, want it to be. We wish all of our problems would go away, and uh, that's not the way it works. It works in the midst of real life, in the middle of real life as we go through things. But you need the faith and the hope to uh, work with you also. You've got to be looking, be seeing, be, be saying lots of prayers. There was a lot going on in my life. Um, my dad went into the hospital. Um, he had a big mass. They told us they expected cancer but yet they couldn't really find out what it was. And so then you're first you're praying, saying a lot of prayers for the right facility, the right doctors, uh, tests, and God show us what's wrong and bring us treatment. And we weren't getting answers real fast, but yet I could see that this was the right place. I felt a peace about it, and that's the first step. And you've got to be looking if you want to have... A, peace, you've got to be looking for it. Um, you can miss it, and I've done that a lot of my life. And then we still didn't have our answers, but they sent him to rehab. They, they did some biopsies and sent those off to Mayo. He went to rehab at the facility. I had a particular facility I was hoping for, and that opened up. And things don't just open up open up by chance, you know? So there's the next step. And as you're watching for God to work, it, it builds your hope, it builds your faith, and it gives you more peace. Um, so he went through his rehab, and then uh, it was time for insurance to send him home, but they told us, the facility said he cannot care for himself, which I knew that, and he wanted to go home. And I spoke to his um, case manager, and she went in and visited with him for five minutes, and he said, oh, okay, I'll stay. They said he could keep his room since he was already there, and he wasn't really receptive to what I was saying, but somebody else came in. And that was fine, so there was another step in God's working, and I was so thankful for that. And then we're dealing with my mom. She has Lewy body dementia, and I applied for a room for her in the same facility. That's why I wanted him in this particular place. They specialize in dementia because I knew if they needed to be somewhere, I wanted them to be where they could see each other. But I also knew it could be a long wait for a room. So lots of more prayers. I got a call a week later that um, a room was opening up and they would 
allow her to have it this one time. Uh, otherwise, if she had to wait, you don't know how long that wait could be. So we took that room. And you've got to be looking for all these things. I might not have been... I'm a, I'm a great warrior. Oh, my gosh. I, yeah. Mm. No, I can... I, I live in the basement, which is my choice. I love that. But I live in the basement, and I can stay down there and worry and uh, fret and realize that uh, days have passed... And God, why aren't you listening to me? And But not notice I'm not really talking to him. I'm just talking to myself and talking myself into a deeper hole and um, st have to stop myself and go, okay, I've got to focus and pray and get back in the Bible and open my eyes and my ears and my heart to God and be paying attention. And... Um, I've got notes, I apologize. Yeah. It, I, I've got to remind myself God's never far off and to be looking for him. I learned something also, though, that you've got to sometimes pray for things that aren't exactly what you want uh, at this time. I, you never want your parents to have to leave home. You never want your parents to have to leave their uh, peace and safety and comfort and, um, but then there's times when it's more important that they get the right care, and I was not able to take care of that. So that's what I had to do. Peace can also be recognizing that you're blessed, and that's also looking. And, and I was seeing every step of the way that we were being blessed, and that just adds more peace. And then, of course, Pastor Joe asked me to talk about peace, and, and then the, the typical thing happens in life. Uh, all these things start falling apart during the week. But, uh, yeah, yeah. But that's okay, and thank you, Diana. I called her, and she gave me calming uh, help, and um, I was also able to get some help from a couple other people, and um, things resolved themselves, but... Be sure you're looking in the right place. Have, have faith and have hope, but be sure you're looking in the right place and that your faith is in the right person. Uh, the, the peace was just unreal, and that's, what, that's when you know it's God. That's when I know it's God. Uh, Philippians 4, 7 says, The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And I could not explain how all of these things just, just happened. But, but that's how I know it's God, because there's no other explanation. My favorite verse is Jeremiah 29, 11. It rocks, you know. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for peace and not evil to give you a future and a hope. And I, I think to myself, if the God of the universe, the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and I, and I love his, this one name, El Elyon, God Most High, isn't that just the coolest? He created all that exists just by the words of his mouth, out of nothing, ex nihilo, that's so cool. And he's got plans for me, and I have to remind myself of this because I can really get down. I can feel insignificant. But he sent his son to die in my place, and I matter to God, and that's peace. That's incredible peace. He knew me when I was formed in my mother's womb. Jesus died for me before the creation of the world, and he has plans for me, which I don't deserve, but he did it. And they're plans of peace, and he was born the Prince of Peace, and he's always with me, and that's why I'm here today. Thank you. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, I love you. Thank you. I love you too. Did she do a great job today? Great job. Hey, man. I love you. <laughs> Public speaking is everyone's greatest fear, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have it. <laughs>
Well, I want you to stand with me because we want to pray over Kelly. We want to pray over her parents too, Lloyd and Sharon. I'll see them this afternoon. We'll visit together and pray together. I might see you there, huh? Who knows? Might. might. Okay. Yes. Amen. And uh, I'll just, of all, you know, your children, have you ever thought about it? Your children someday will be your caregiver, very possibly. And so, uh, you know, not, oh, that's a scary thought. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I hope I have someone like Kelly in my life. Amen. And I'm just so grateful. Father, I thank you for Kelly. I thank you for her love for her parents. Uh, Lord, in Colossians, it said that faith should rule in our hearts. And just before that, you said love should engulf us. And peace will rule in our hearts as it flows out of love. And I see that here. I see that. And so, Lord, I pray for your continual blessing. Kelly has a glove on your hand for her parents and they, uh, I know they know that. And I just pray that you'll give her extra strength, extra wisdom, and just fill her with your peace, even when things are not quite what we want them to be and, and things begin to change. And Lord, uh, we're just going to look to you. And your peace is going to guard our hearts and mind, just like Kelly said. And so I pray that over all of us today, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Put your hands together again, would you? Bless you, sweetheart. Amen.